I'm calling the meeting to order. Um, did everyone have a chance to review the minutes? Yes. Are there any changes? No changes? Nope. None on my part. Okay, we need to take a roll call vote. Um, someone like to make a motion to accept the minutes? I make a motion to accept the minutes. Okay. Second. Second. Okay. Michael, you vote yes or no? Yes. I wasn't there. I shouldn't vote. I'm sorry. Oh. I think we need you, though. Mm hmm. I'll vote yes, then. <laughs> okay. Patty? She's just now logging on. Oh, okay. Kristen? Yes. Um, and I'm a yes, okay. I'm a yes. Is that you, Patty? Yes. Yes, okay. Uh, you know, Christina's not here. She sent an email that she wasn't. I have a note that she's not. That oh, she has to okay. work. She has to work for this meeting. I thought that was. I had oh. asked if someone could attend the meeting yesterday morning. I thought she was replying to that, but okay, maybe she wasn't. Okay. I think she, I have down that she can't come tonight. She has to work till six thirty or something. Okay. Five thirty or something. Okay. Um, Margaret is not able to attend, so no. She was going to try to send me something, but I don't think she did. At least last check, she hadn't sent me a report. Um, Concord Housing Authority, Rod, would you like to make a report? Sure. Wait, uh, I'm sorry, Carolyn. Okay, so maybe I missed, is that all the approval? It was Caddy, Kristen, Patty, Carolyn, and Michael? And me, Carol. Uh, Carol yeah. and Rod, Rod second. So he's oh, Rod, yes. okay. So Terry is not here. Sorry. Okay. Okay. Well, it, it turns out that the C, the one of the items at the CHA meeting uh, that is relevant to our meeting is that they were having Zoom issues as well. And here are some of the issues that they're dealing with, which we may need to deal with in the future. The first is um, has to do with the interview process for the executive director search effort that's going on. And there was quite a bit of a discussion about how they were going to interview the final candidates. Would they do it in person? Would they do it in Zoom? Um, there was a, quite a bit of spirited discussion with no decision made at the meeting. Um, they also had a discussion about future uh, CHA meetings. When are they going to resume in person? How to have a Zoom option for other attendees? For example, people that were going to uh, observe these uh, these calls, but could they meet as a committee? These are sort of transition questions that we may need to face as a committee going forward. And then finally, uh, they had the uh, we had the unpleasant experience of being Zoom bombed uh, <laughs> uh, during the uh, during the uh, call, with, and there was some pretty um, uh, pretty horrible language which was uh, used. Uh, but we were able to, uh, the organizers were able to get that person off. Uh, but that was, um, you know, pretty uh, insulting and horrible for the meeting attendees. So it's uh, something which may come up here at some point as well. Anyway, this is a, a sort of common issues maybe that other co committees in Concord are, are going to be dealing with as we transition away from remote uh, to more in-person activities. So just wanted to share that information. Um, next uh, point is that the Everett Garden uh, bathroom upgrades are going to proceed this year. So that was good news for, for that group. Um, they did have, because, because of all of the economic upset last year, they've had a lot of challenges in calculating tenant incomes during the year in order to decide what the appropriate level of support and subsidy should be. But they've seemed to have managed that. And then there was an issue which I, I just wanted to raise here in the event that uh, vaccination clinics uh, do uh, occur. 
Um, and that is that there was a March 5th uh, vaccination uh, clinic held uh, to be held at Peter Bulkley, uh, which I believe did occur. They were using four pharmacists from the West Concord Pharmacy. But here is the issue. They had ordered 55 doses, all scheduled. Then they got some cancellations. And as of the meeting, which was the day before the vaccination, there were 49 um, uh, residents still scheduled to be vaccinated as of March 4th. And so the issue that was discussed is what to do with any leftover vaccines. And uh, this uh, was a broad ranging issue and included some discussion about whether CHA board members should be considered for the leftovers. And uh, the only criteria that they could apply was that whoever got the leftovers had to meet the current Massachusetts vaccination criteria. I, I just bring this up in case there are um, Council of Aging sponsored uh, vaccination clinics you know, in the, in the near future because we're getting to the point where there's enough vaccines that you know, small groups, by that I mean less than you know, 100 or so can be vaccinated. Uh, there, there may be issues like this that need to be discussed, and it might be useful to talk to the CHA members to see how they dealt with it. Uh, so that's uh, that's really the update uh, for us. Mostly, it's just committee experiences that may be relevant to us as a committee. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you, Rod. Um, as for Zoom bombing, I don't think we can get away from that because our meetings are open to the public; anyone can attend, so they can't be set up to be private to keep people out. But can they be set up so that nobody gets to turn on their microphone unless the moderator turns it on? Is yeah, so then you wouldn't hear anything. Well, I think the host should be able to mute them. You can mute them, but you got to be fast. Um, so usually you you see something unpleasant or you hear something unpleasant by the time the host quickly tries to, to okay. mute um, but you got to be fast when it happens. All right. Yeah. What, what happened, Carol, at the meeting was that a duplicate uh, uh, cell came up on Zoom. So, for example, there was a Rod Rydell cell, but it was in addition to my to yours. Cell, yeah. And we were all, you know, video and uh, audio muted. But I saw that and I immediately put myself on video so that they could see who I Which was. Okay. And which 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 person was doing this? It was a way to sort of isolate and indicate. Oh, and that person bounced around the entire group, doing uh, this uh -huh. was somebody with some real, you know, computer skills that knew how to work the system. Mm -hmm. Okay, wow, well, that's unfortunate. It's not the first time, and it probably won't be the last. But nope, nope, it, you know, if it happens to us, we'll have to deal with it. Um, as far as going forward when we can meet in person and how Zoom meetings we handle, I think the town will come out with guidance on that. Okay. So I, I don't think that's gonna be up to a committee to decide. The town will tell us what's allowed. Hopefully we will be able to have people attending by Zoom in the future, even if we're meeting in person because more people are able to do it that way. Yeah. yeah. So. Can I just ask Rod, so were they, did they have specific issues with the Concord Housing Authority or was this just sport? This was all topics that were discussed just at the Concord Housing you know, Committee, uh, Concord Housing Authority meeting. So I'm sure that these, this is just a, an example of what other committees are confronting as well. But did, did these Zoom bombers, did they have real issues with the Concord Housing Authority that they were trying to air or they were just playing around and messing things up? Oh no, it was just, as far as I could tell, it was just an opportunity to use really foul language. Uh, there was there was no issue that was discussed. There wasn't room in the there wasn't room in the conversation for any real <laughs> conversation to occur. <laughs> Filled with oh, profanity. Oh dear. Okay. Um, Disability Commission. Ginger, did Lauren attend a meeting? Is there anything to report? Yes, she did. Um, they received a report from the middle school, an update on the middle school, and they offered, the members offered um, uh, advice and suggestions to that committee related to um, appropriate um, adaptations to accommodate dis various disabilities. And 
um, they did have two other items on their agenda that they didn't get to because that discussion pretty much took the whole meeting. So that <laughs> that's what that was this time. Okay, good. Thank you. Uh, Concord after 60 is Terry, so no report. Um, Concord Housing Development Corp. Michael. Right. Um, there hasn't been much development there. Uh, Christopher Heights is still in the middle of arranging the financing, and that won't be completed until September. They don't anticipate any problems, but they're trying to get their tax credits sorted out. But uh, there probably won't be any more news until about September, and then construction can start. Uh, a separate issue is the Junction Village Open Space, and the town has set up a task force to look into uh, what should be done with that. And that's going to be a, uh, a separate committee and a separate operation, as opposed to the senior housing and Christopher Hines. Okay, so open so, space, uh, open space being like green space or? Uh, it's a, kind of a small park down by the river there. Okay. Um, it's recreational space, although there won't be sports there. But it'll be walking. Okay. <laughs> Who knows if they'll be fishing? So is this space that they have to set aside in order to do the development that they're doing? No, they don't have to set it aside. But, <clears throat> but it's a space they weren't going to use and therefore, the, at the town meeting, um, there was considerable discussion about making that space available as a recreation space for the town. Okay. Is that it? That's it. Thank you, Michael. Okay, um, Starmat, Krista. Uh, not much to report that's different. Uh, they are finalizing the report and they will plan to um, give their update to the select board in April. I have a question, um, Kristen. I've heard that, that this is one individual, I don't know if it's more than one individual, has pointed out that there's some reluctance to set up affordable housing on the Starmet site because it is a reclaimed site. And accordingly, this individual is proposing that some of the town offices in West Concord be transferred to the Starmet site and those buildings then be made for affordable housing. And the prime example they raised, of course, was the CRA. So there is a proposal being made, not by any official, that the CRA should be moved to the Stormat site, and then the Harvey Wheeler School could be turned into affordable housing. I just want you or the committee to be aware that that talk is going on. So we talked about that last month. Um, the committee did hear the recommendation from this group that the COA should not be moved to that location. And so they have removed references to the senior center being at the NMI Starmet site in favor of community spaces that would allow for a variety of uses by the COA for an activity, but not as a, a, a primary site. Okay. Um, included. Um, but, but when you said you've heard from this group, you mean the Starmet group? This, when my husband <laughs> came to the CO meet, COA okay. meeting, he heard from the COA feedback that the, the individual who's proposing this is not a member of the Starmet group. Oh, wait, say it again. The individual who's proposing this is, is not a member of the Stormat, Stormat Task Force. It's separate from that. Well, and so they're proposing use of the Starmat site? 
when you, when you say they, it's one individual. Right, but who are they? Who is that individual giving this information to? Because it goes to this task force, who is ultimately responsible he's, for presenting recommendations to this. I, I don't know who he's giving it to, but he's certainly making that proposal. I mean, I think they had lots of feedback. I mean, they had you know many town meetings where they were welcoming feedback, and plenty of people did provide that kind of input, but based on the information presented by this group, the suggestion, the recommendation by the StarMet task force is not going to include that the COA be placed at that site for a number of reasons that were given by this group, but that it might okay. have a satellite for activities. I mean, that person can propose all that. There are plenty of people who have lots of um, feelings about what should and shouldn't be there. And that's what their job at that task force is, is to weed through all of that and ultimately prepare a single recommendation that goes to the select board. And, you know, ultimately it then gets into other hands for final use. Okay, thank you, Kristen. Uh, Patty, Board of Health. Right, they had a meeting on Tuesday, March 16, just a couple days ago. And <clears throat> they also had some tech problems um, at any, but not anything like the um, housing authority did. Anyway, the meeting went on. And um, here are some of the main points that came up that the schools are reopening K through five all day on April 5th. And um, through middle school by, I believe it was like the 25th of April or something like that. The high school, they weren't sure yet when that will open. Um, secondly, they're doing, they've been doing pool testing of, um, you know, a pool of people to test for COVID-19 and they are not getting many positives. I believe there was one of eight to 10 groups or something like that. Um, the state is funding for that testing. <clears throat> um, thirdly, the DPH, Department of Public Health, kept um, changing the plan that is in Massachusetts. So um, it was very frustrating to the Board of Health with the change of plans all the time in how to do the vaccines and all. Um, they need a regional group, which is um, including the towns like Carlisle, Lincoln, Sudbury, Maynard, et cetera, where they can provide 750 um, vaccinations a day. And they must, if I understood it correctly, accept people from anywhere, not just within the region. Um, they don't know if this will actually happen, but Concord is working together with other towns. Um, Ginger, you could correct me if you know anything different from what I'm saying, okay? Oh, well, um, I'm, I'm somewhat yeah. familiar with it, so. Yeah. Um. So um, FEMA is paying for all those costs. Um, there were two clinics at the Council on Aging, and um, they couldn't speak highly enough of the Council, Council on Aging and the efforts that were made there. And she mentioned it several times that you guys bent over backwards, Ginger, to um, be helpful and all. <laughs> How you reached out to at home bound or whatever seniors and called for the second clinic, I believe especially called certain people that we, you felt were at risk and all, the oldest and most fragile, um, in the community. Susan Rask, who's in charge of the Board of Health, she said, you know, if they would just give us the vaccine, we'll get it done, but they haven't given it to us. Very, very frustrating for them. Um, the government told them to be ready 
and they got ready and they were ready and they've done this type of thing before, but then the government didn't use them, but instead used these um, major big sites. Um, again, she mentioned COA, amazing, great job. And she said, luckily people are getting the vaccine at mass sites, at least they are doing that. Um, she said, in terms of businesses complying with the regulations, they know that not every business is complying completely. They cannot enforce it. Um, the Board of Health tries, but they do investigate every complaint that comes to them. For example, one was the Thoreau Club, I guess. They investigated the complaint, et cetera. Um, you know, they, they do all that investigation and all. And she just said, we've had numerous complaints and we've investigated every single one. That's basically it on the COVID, but then they also talked about an MDPH public health excellence grant program to support public health um, cross jurisdictional shared service arrangements that has to do with combining with other towns. And she said they applied for this grant, even though it's unlikely that Concord can get that um, because we are not a needy town like many other towns are in Massachusetts. And um, however, they decided, let's put our hat in the ring anyway. Um, apparently the uh, grant is for a three year period. They're looking for shared expenses that these towns might share. And they thought of, for example, um, educating town people about various health issues. Um, that would be one way that they could share expenses and do it all together. Um, uh, let's see. That is basically it. They're glad they've chosen to pursue um, the grant, even though unlikely. Um, the next meeting they have will be on April 27. Okay. Thank you, Patty. Welcome. Can I have uh, a second? A little clarifying question here? Yes. Sorry. Uh, so Patty, so when you say they need a lead original group that would include Carlisle so they could provide these 750 vaccines a day, you're, that, I, I assume that's meaning they would like, like the, there is a regional group or they're trying to get together a regional group in the hopes that it could ultimately be involved in providing the 750? Susan, Susan you have something to add there, I think. Um, yeah, I do. I just was waiting for Kristen to finish. Um, uh, um, a request has been submitted to the state. It was, it was submitted by Bedford, but it includes Bedford, Concord, Sudbury. Uh, I think there are seven or eight communities because when you look on the map, you see there's these sites, but there's kind of a big hole right where we are. There's no kind of central um, center. So the last we heard at the Monday select board meeting was that it is in the process, but they still don't know whether it will be allowed or not, but there's certainly that effort is underway to, to have a, um, a regional vaccination center and the high school, you know, the, the facility that was set up at the high school for the first responders that um, was very successful. And so there's a spot and there's the infrastructure and as has been mentioned before, it's just the, the um, supply that's so we're waiting. Okay, we'll keep our fingers crossed on that one. Yes, Rod? Uh, just another question, Patty. It, I don't know if the Board of Health actually can get this data, but do we know how many of our senior citizens have actually received the vaccine and how many still need to be vaccinated? We do. Oh, <laughs> yeah, that's good. Okay. We didn't discuss that at the meeting, so Ginger. Yeah, so Ginger? Uh, how, how are we doing as a, you know, as a town? 
are we at the are we confident? I mean, I think we're doing reasonably well, and this information is available on the state website. So oh. by zip code. So you can type in Concord zip code mm -hmm. and uh, scroll down and it's by age. You know, you can see how many people, you know, um, I had to, it's sort of funny how you have to put this together. I printed out page one with all the headers and then I had to get the, cause it's like 70 pages long. You have to get, here's Concord that I highlighted. And then I have to sort of line this up here to figure out what it is I'm looking at. But um, so you can see how many people, you know, zero to 19 have had it, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, um, I mean, this is not a professional opinion. I think we're doing pretty good. Obviously, I, I looked at the 60 plus category. And if I do my math right, we've got over 3,000 60 plus people vaccinated. So um, and how many are there in our town over 60? Well, there's over 5,000, but but we're coming along, you know. And we're more than 50%. Yeah, so mm -hmm. we're, we're doing, I think we're doing well, yeah. you know, all things considered, given the limitation of the vaccine, you know, of the supply mm -hmm. of the vaccine. One, one follow-up issue, Ginger, uh, that's great. I'll, I'm going to go look at that. That's terrific. I think at some point it's going to be an issue of we'll get to a core of people that for one reason or another have opted not to receive the Correct. vaccine or, or cannot get the vaccine because they're restricted in their, you know, in their abilities to get to a vaccination place. Um, maybe that's something we can talk about in future meetings just in terms of protecting people that still want the vaccine but can't get it. That's all. I I can I can add to that when we get to my report what we're doing about that. Great, thank you. Okay. And maybe this is along those lines, but Jin, I, I'm sure it is. Ginger, I'm wondering if you need more volunteers because I do know people who would be happy to assist with driving and are already vaccinated, but I don't know if you still need volunteers. So far, we have six um, vetted people, volunteers that are willing to drive people to the mega sites, and we've not had to completely use them yet so um but there's still been um some a few local options we just finished another clinic on monday again that'll be part of my report so you know as people are calling us and they haven't been able to get in we've been having a clinic coming up that we've been able to get them in so but it seems as though all of those local options are now done um, although last Monday's, Monday's was a surprise to me. So um, now we really will be moving into people who have not been able to get it, cannot get there, need help with the website, et cetera. Um, so far, so in other words, at the moment, what we have is good, but it could change because we the local options have dried up. Oh, dear. Um, I just want to say that at the end of the meeting, they asked if there were any other comments or questions. And I did say it, it seemed like a real shame that it hasn't been rolled out that people could get it locally, like as a town, since most towns were prepared for that. And people would far prefer to go to their own people than drive to an unfamiliar site and um, so on and so forth. So I said that I hope in the future, because things like this will come up again, that that could be done differently somehow. And that hopefully the state will hear about that. I thought they were gonna be allowing pharmacies to do the vaccines. I know CDS had some vaccines around the state but those slots were booked, I think, almost immediately. I was hoping that would be like a continuing thing, but. Mm. You know. uh, well, the only thing about the, the mass the mass sites um, is you don't waste any of your uh, shots because there's so many people coming in, they only open what they need and they can distribute them all. Didn't we have an issue, um, Ginger, with uh, the West Concord Pharmacy having some and they didn't use them all? And so you had to go through a whole procedure of trying to find people who would need the shots. I don't think they have that in those mass vaccination sites. Right. 
I don't think anybody's wasting any shots. Let me let me just say that, but mm. I can't speak for everybody, but everyone knows how precious those are. And it does create a little bit of a scramble if you know you have a no show at your clinic or something. Uh, most, I mean, I know we kept a waiting list, you know, um, of, you know, when we, we filled up and then mm -hmm. we called people that had indicated they could come immediately if they received that call. And so, no dose and then the other thing is sometimes it's not just the no shows because we don't get many of those because everyone you know knows how important it is to get there and how difficult it is to get another appointment but um this might have come up in last month's report you know the the vials of moderna you know are it's 10 shots per vial but you know every once in a while you get 11 you get 11 mm -hmm. shots out of a vial um and then so suddenly you know um, you have what happened to yeah. us on Monday was we were having a 50 dose clinic and they managed to get 54 doses out of those five vials. And so um, we we suddenly had four additional doses and we were able to call four more people to come down for those doses, but they did not get wasted. Okay. I mean, maybe this is getting far afield now. I mean, nationally, lots of doses are getting wasted. And so you can see how there's a preference to do the mass vaccination sites. Um, and there now is a national response, if you've all heard of Dr. B, a website that people can sign up for that's trying to marry all of the clinics that have wet leftover vaccines, for those shows and other reasons, with people who have signed up to be notified if they're a leftover vaccine. So I think nationally, they're also trying to come up a way with pairing those leftover vaccines with people who are interested. But having worked at the COVID response at the start, like it is hard to, you know, look at every community and understand their capacity when you've got, you know, 300 million things, doses that actually need to, or more doses that need to be. Mm -hmm. So hopefully it will continue to get refined and maybe <clears throat> it will be highlighted as a place that can manage this, but it's hard to do from the get go. Okay. Are we ready to move on? <laughs> um, Public works, Rod. Infrastructure, okay. <laughs> so uh, just some notes here. Um, uh, the, um, we started off with a very extensive over town water system. And I, I have to tell you, just as a citizen, it's really impressive what the town does to generate our water supply and to safeguard our water supply. Um, and uh, Ginger, I don't know, if, if, there may be some opportunity in the future. I know that Department of Public Works is doing these outreach um, presentations now to various groups. For example, there was a group to the League of Women Voters talking about uh, <clears throat> recycling effort. And if there is a, you know, sometime when we're back to a, a circumstance where you can actually have people gather together to get a presentation from a town department, I, I put in the recycling and this water system overview because it's impressive and it will make people feel really good about what's going on with the, you know, with the water supply in the, in the town. That's great to know they're willing to do that. We have had recycling talks in the past, but we've never had a water supply talk so that I think people would be interested in that. Yeah, the, the water <laughs> supply presentation was the first, I mean, there were members of the supervisory board, the, you know, the committee, it said this is the first time in four years that they understood what was going on with the whole water supply and they really thanked you know the the chair of the of the department for organizing this and you know the beauty of it is once you have it you can give it as many times as you like and it's i think it would be a, a wonderful you know wonderful thing for citizens more citizens to see that um more on a, i hope this is now in the past uh, sidewalk snow removal um and they talked about the uh, carnage done to mailboxes uh, and, to, and to learn that you can call the snow desk and uh, report your mailbox damage. You will get a replacement. Uh, they will repair. They will give you temporary uh, mailboxes. So if seniors are reporting on uh, having their uh, mailboxes uh, destroyed by the, an errant snowplow, they should um, be reminded that they can call the town uh, to have remediation. Something that is, I think, going to be of interest to the seniors is that there's going to be um, uh, quite a bit of um, 
change at the intersection of Hubbard Street and Walden Street, right by the post office in the center of town, uh, curb cuts, uh, new, uh, new ramps, uh, and, and uh, a new organization of the street to make it safer, new sidewalks. Uh, so that's something that people should probably be aware of, and it should improve uh, safety and accessibility there uh, around that area. Uh, and um, of probably of no other interest to, to anyone uh, except those who are gardeners, this committee, is that the compost site is reopening on April 3rd. Ah, nice. Okay. My favorite days in town. So <laughs> that's all, Caroline. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Uh, peg access, Carol. All right, well, um, a couple of things. The Massachusetts COA, which I mentioned before, is having cooking classes on the uh, third Friday of each month, and they were scheduled to be aired on the PEG channels. And when I uh, looked at our last bulletin, um, there was no indication of that and what channel or what time, but there was a sign up. So if you wanted to uh, see those classes, you signed up and you could have a Zoom or a YouTube meeting. Um, I would much prefer to watch it on TV, however. Uh, so I, I looked on the uh, Minuteman uh, Media Network site and they have a TV guide on there. And there was nothing that had to do with the cooking classes, but I did notice a couple of programs from the COA. And I said, hmm. And I looked at our bulletin and there was nothing in the bulletin about these either. So I called Tina to find out what the heck's going on here. And basically what she told me was that the Mass COA supposedly puts up their classes on this Mass Access site that other Massachusetts uh, entities do, and uh, they weren't doing it. And so the Minuteman Network couldn't present anything because they couldn't get access to the classes. But then the other classes that I saw, Tina said, yeah, a, a while ago, she made several old programs available to the MMN, and um, they just chose to put some up without saying anything anywhere. So I said, <laughs> well, this is rather confusing. And uh, when we had our PEG access meeting, I uh, asked what was going on, and I guess, and I didn't know this, but um, the Minuteman Media Network has given from nine to eleven on Tuesdays and three uh, and uh, nine nine to eleven on Tuesdays for Concord COA, three to four on Tuesdays for the Carlisle COA, and then on Thursdays they've given nine to eleven for the Carlisle COA and three to four for the Concord COA. So we could put up anything we wanted at those time frames or just set aside for us. <laughs> so this is hodgepodge. I, I said this is ridiculous. <laughs> You know, I didn't know this. I don't know if anybody, anybody really knew about it. And the other thing too is, as I said, you know, to them, a lot of people aren't gonna go on your website to look at the TV guide there and to see whether they should look at anything. And um, he said that they are now starting to work on getting a live TV guide feed for the PEG access channel. So that like when you go on to your TV and you can see all the other channels and what they're offering, they might be able to start doing this and getting it for the peg channels. So anyway, um, that, that's what has to do with us uh, on their, uh, in their meetings. Um, but it's just an interesting group and an interesting things that are happening there. So are we able to select what they put up during those reserved time spots? If we had something to do, yes, we could. But oh. as Tina was saying, for example, uh, a lot of people who present things to the COA don't want to be put on TV. So she has to be careful what she gives them. And a lot of the things that she gave them, she said, weren't really very good quality stuff. So I, I don't know. I, I don't know what's the answer to that. So I'm assuming they'll, we'll figure something out. <laughs> so. Well I can, I can add to that, I guess, in my report, but we've had multiple articles in pretty much every monthly newsletter about the MMN. I just pulled the, you know, the, the newsletter uh, binder to show you, um, including, you know, they started doing movies. So we started 
putting right. you know that announcement in there right and then we also have put in there that you can look at coa programming on those designated times we've advertised that as well um but there isn't a good way for people to find yeah. out um without going online and um I and if, the, if the newsletter yeah but if the newsletter doesn't indicate it you wouldn't know to go look Right, see. but we've been putting it in the newsletter. We have been, and uh, we didn't put it in. Actually, there was a discussion last month. We were out of space, and I said, you know, we've been putting that MMN in there every month for a year. Let's take it out this month, you know, and but there has been something in there regularly about that. I understood that there was also an issue with um, and maybe the PEG committee can 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 speak to this, like certain things that they do would to advertise that um, their programming or, um, you know, to put a TV guide on their channel or something would cost lots of lots of money. But maybe, you know, I don't know. They sounded like they were looking into it again. So after I brought that up, because yeah, so we, it we like too looked, share your frustration yeah, you know, yeah. that it's not easy for seniors to be able to yeah. see what the choices are on yeah. on the public channel. And, right. Um, so um, what's interesting also, if you do, if or the rest of you don't know this, but if you go onto YouTube and then you search for Minuteman Media Network, you will find a whole host of programs. Uh, all select meetings, in fact, our meetings are on there. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. And there's a whole bunch of things. They, I mean, you could spend your whole life looking at everything, but there is a lot there, and which I never realized before, which is nice that I'm on the, <laughs> the liaison on this peg committee because I had no clue that was what they had. So, I think all of our meetings have to be made available. That's why we record them and they get posted. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Carol. Uh, transportation, Ginger, is there anything to report? No report. Um, Carrie, do you have anything for Concord After 60? Um, yes, I, I apologize. I made a mistake of not updating my clock on my desk. <laughs> and, uh, I, I am an hour, hour out of cycle, so my apologies. Um, yes, we... Uh, I, I, I did send you a report. I, there was a meeting uh, uh, that was called a poetry slam uh, in February that was really very good. And uh, everybody came with poems and they read them and we talked about them. And um, a lot, the general consensus was, you know, there really should be more opportunities for poetry to be enjoyed. Uh, and uh, that... Um, that was something that seniors could enjoy without um, any kind of uh, physical exertion per se. Uh, so that was a really good meeting. Uh, and then there was um, a cheese testing, tasting Zoom meeting that was held on um, February the 21st, no, not 21st, the 26th, I got that wrong on my report. Anyway, there was a, uh, Ann Rarick uh, negotiated with Steve, who was the owner of the Concord Cheese Shop. And he arranged, uh, he said he would do the presentation and he arranged, we tested uh, six different cheeses and uh, he talked about it and then we ate it and, and we said we liked it and all that sort of thing. So I, thought this was an interesting approach of a collaboration between a local business and the senior community. Um, the way it was arranged was you signed up and you, um, like on a, Tuesday, on a Tuesday before, and then uh, you paid for, it was $50 uh, a couple, and you, uh, that was for the cheese the six cheeses and a box of crackers, um, special fancy crackers. And he had wines to recommend if you wanted to add that, but the basic cheese part was $50. 
And uh, then uh, you paid with your credit card and then you would go the, the afternoon before the event and pick up the cheeses from the cheese shop. So they had them all separately packaged and ready to go. Uh, and it was delicious and it was good fun. And uh, for those of us that were a, a team of one, uh, we got to repeat it the next night you know, <laughs> uh, in our own kitchen and just really enjoy the whole thing. And I was just very impressed with how successful this particular use of Zoom happened to be. And the thought occurred to me that it might be if we could be creative enough, it might be interesting to see what other businesses in town uh, might be interested in sharing their way, wares in some fashion uh, with seniors. Um, because it was the sort of thing that, you know, a homebound senior could do if, if someone else, like a volunteer from uh, the COA or whatnot, would pick up what they wanted and brought it to their house, depending on what the particular event was. So both of so I'm having fun with this assignment. I thank you. <laughs> it does sound like fun. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, I do not have a report. I did not attend the meeting yesterday, but Susan was there. She reported on the vaccination clinic for the COA and put in a plug to fill our vacancies on the board. So that was good. Thank you, Susan. Uh, let's see. Um, Susan, do you have anything to add? Anything that's come up with the select board? Um, yeah, I just wanted to let you know that um, as, as we hear every week about uh, vaccine supply, it's not for lack of trying on the, on the, on the part of the Board of Health and the town government. Um, so we're still uh, attempting to do that with the effort I, I referenced earlier about the combination of towns applying for a regional vaccine center. Um, the only other news that kind of affects all of us is that the, um, th there are three budgeting entities in Concord. It's uh, the town government, the, public, the K to eight Concord public schools, and then the district, the high school. And they all came in at the guideline that the finance committee had um, recommended, which is good and doesn't always happen. And the increase in taxes will be two and a half percent. They did notice that the 22 budget was kind of tagged off the 21 budget, which was lower than the FY20 budget because it was revised. If you recall, we had um, town meeting in September last year instead of April. So we were, um, so they revised the budget um, downwards from FY20 because of the pandemic. And in September, there were still a lot of unknowns. Still, that's still the case now. And there'll be some um, COVID expenses and um, other things that will uh, impact that, that have been incorporated into the budget. Some of them will be addressed by the relief. And the other thing that, that I think, uh, Ron, somebody mentioned earlier, I think it was Ron, is about um, they're trying, they are trying to figure out. Every committee has said, gee, it'll be great to see each other, but boy, participation is so much higher when you just have to sit down at your computer. So <laughs> that is a special um, uh, provision that we have because of the pandemic. So I'm sure that every town is looking into if and how that can be continued in. Um, when we get back to whatever normal is, or, or post-pandemic. Um, I, oh, I went uh, in talking about PEG access, the, the, it stands for public education and government. So those are the three legs of the, of the TV <coughs> station. So the government part is where you see the select board and finance committee and all the committee meetings. Um, but they have, you know, other things too. I have to say, I haven't explored those in depth, but um, there is a variety, there are a variety of offerings. Oh, I know what I want to say. The, regarding the water supply, last week there was a major decision in Concord's favor. Um, Nagog Pond, uh, we laid claim to, there are two water acts, one in 1800s and one in, in the 19, mid 1900s. And we 
uh, staked a claim on NAGOG in, in the later one, the Water Act of 1964, whatever it was. And there was litigation. Uh, Littleton and Acton were, were saying that their rights from the earlier Water Act were valid. And uh, uh, the court said, we don't think so. And then it went to the Supreme Judicial Court who said, no, our rights prevail. But, you know, that doesn't mean they will never ever, you know, there's some wiggle room, but we were prepared to invest a fair amount of money, several million into a water treatment plant for that water source, which it ends up, and I learned this at the water lecture that was presented to the League of Women Voters. There, we have the wells, but in the summer is when we end up having to draw on NAGOG because of, even though irrigation is, you know, we have water restrictions and so forth, the water use is way higher in the summer. So that is a very important uh, piece of our water supply. And it's been uh, preserved for us due to the court process. So that's really good news. But that water story, it was Alan Cathcart that did it, and he um, he knows it inside and out, and it is a very interesting um, combination of resources and good story. And uh, that's about it for Select Board. We're just heading into uh, the warrant will close. I think it's the twenty. It's next week sometime. And then we'll be getting ready for hearings on all the Warren articles, the, the select board, the finance committee, and the planning board will have separate hearings and the uh, Community Preservation Act will be in, in one of those groups. So everyone is encouraged and you'll just be able to sit at your computer and pop in there because of course it'll be a Zoom meeting, but in order to um, uh, provide public hearing and get feedback on what's going to be proposed at town meeting, which will be June, I believe it's the 13th. It's not the week, the first weekend is the weekend of graduation. It's the Sunday of the following weekend in June, outdoors at Doug White Field again. And that's it for now. Thank you. All right, thank you. As a reminder, oh, Patty, you have something? I just have a question. The, the reason that our summer water is higher than the rest of the year is because what, Susan? Well, the usage is higher and it is irrigation or, you know, watering, but we, we do have restrictions on that, but um, I can't tell you exactly what other factors are involved, but the water usage is higher in the summer than in the winter. People water their lawns, whether they're supposed yeah. to or not. Yeah, right. Their gardens. And, and I understand that if you're on a well, you can water anyway, but it does all come from the groundwater. It, mm -hmm. so it, you exactly. Know, and that's it, exactly it, what happens. People, I'll, I see signs saying uh, from the well water or something. And I think, well, so what? It's still the same water table, right. but yeah. no, I the think, town doesn't control that. I think, I have heard there's some resentment from the other towns that um, of the way it all went down. Mm, I'm sure. I'm sort sure. of the idea that Concord didn't come across looking like a good partner, you know, mm. in, in where three towns are sharing NAGOG. It sort of was it, it considered to be sort of bullying or something. Well, well, you know, it, it worked on both sides because Littleton is wanting to put in a, a bottling plant, which will use a tremendous amount of water. And then there are entities on the border of the, of the pond that are drilling wells near there, not in Concord in one of the other towns. So that taps into the water table. So there wasn't, you know, there was push from all quarters. So, um, I don't think, I, I don't, I can't respond to anything specific, but I know that everybody wants, I mean, water wars seems to be what, what our future is in, in many ways. Right. I just, it just was oh, sort of upsetting as a resident of Concord to hear that we didn't act in a very neighborly way. 
mm. was the view of that I heard expressed. From, uh, from Concord residents or from Acton? No, from uh, yeah. residents from Acton or Littleton. Yeah. Yeah. And I just one other clarifying remark, Susan. So you said, so as a result of that, the, the claim, uh, so now um, we are investing in water treatment for the Nagong, Nagong water. Right, and we, that's been in the work, that's been in the planning stages for a number of years. And this hurdle needed to be, or this dispute needed to be settled before we were willing to invest a lot of money into treatment that maybe we wouldn't even have the rights to. Now it doesn't uh, uh, it doesn't cut off Acton and Littleton totally. There's some other piece to it that I'm not quite clear on because I'm not a. But we have we are the have I think they can uh, um, submit some requests for a certain amount of water, like whatever based on whatever they've used in the past. There's some legal other pieces to it, but our um, predominant um, claim is was preserved by the by the court rulings. Okay. Um, before we go on to Ginger's report, I wanted to bring up um, our meeting time again. Kristen, this wasn't good for Kristen to meet at four on Thursdays. It's also not so good for me either. Um, is it possible to meet at five, like five to six on Thursday? Is Thursday the only time? Well, we moved it to Thursday because the select board meetings were on Monday. Okay. Um, Susan, what days are good for you? Um, well, the five o'clock would work just about any day, except for Monday. Um, and I do have four o'clock meetings some Tuesdays, but it, you know, if you chose another day, any day but Monday, I could, a lot of the meetings are, they maybe every once in a while they collide with COA. I don't have to choose what, you know, to go to one mm -hmm. rather than the other, but, um, I, I would defer to you all on the time. It, four or five o'clock on any day, except Monday, would work, I think, for me. I mean, I'll clarify. For me, um, I coach tennis, so that's every day except for Monday. And I don't know. I mean, five o'clock might be better. I don't actually know the schedule at this point because COVID is changing everything. So that may or may not get me here, but I think I just need to, you know, I'll miss one month and then I'll be here. It's only two months of coaching right now and then it comes up in the fall again. So I don't wanna mess everything up. I, five o'clock is better, but I'm not sure it will completely solve my problem. Okay. Ginger, okay. how about you? What? I'm flexible. Okay. Terry. Gin yeah. Ginger, how about you? Um. I mean, I, I can make it work. We, as you know, we, we met at five o'clock for the first um, nine years of my employment. Um, you know, it it's not as bad when it really gets out at six and then I have a commute home. Uh, when it goes longer than an hour, you know, and I've already been here since eight in the morning, it, you know, it it is exhausting, you know, but it's only once a month and uh, we make it work. So, um, you know, I'm I'm, I'm a team player, so if if five o'clock works better for most people, then I certainly will make that work. Carol Ann, what about you? You have a, a problem with four o'clock every day or just on Thursdays? No, I work until five. That's my problem. <laughs> <laughs> but I think it's okay. I can be flexible, so I can do four o'clock. So. So Kristen, there's just two more months and you're not sure about? Yeah, I mean, it's these next two months. So if I miss one of these meetings, I will miss one of the practices in the next month. I already told the athletic director that, and then it comes up again in the fall and it's two months, so, you know. Okay, we're not gonna worry about the fall because things may be all different by then anyway. All right, so we'll leave it at four on Thursday. Does 
430 help the working people um, to not have to, you know, do whatever you have to do, go to work early in order to get off at four? Does 430 make it any better? Uh, not really. <laughs> yeah. not, not enough to change it. Okay. All right, so we'll leave it at four on Thursday. Four, okay. four is uh, better for me. Uh, I'm pretty flexible on uh, most of the days. Uh, the FinCom meetings are uh, usually at seven, but uh, sometimes um, they start earlier, um, like about 6.30, um, it, but it can work. <laughs> so okay. four, four o'clock is, uh, five o'clock gets tighter, but four o'clock's good. Okay, we'll leave it at four. Okay. And we're already after five. Ginger, it's your turn. I know, and I'm always the one that talks the longest, so <laughs> I have to <laughs> I have to try to slim this down here. Um, uh, let me do the short things first, just more of a you know FYI for so we've we're entering into a cooperative arrangement with Open Table. Um, in case you don't know, that's the food pantry that serves the Concord area. Um, they got a grant to do some pre-prepared meals that are called healthy helpings. It's designed for basically heart healthy. If you've been told by your physician, you should be on a heart healthy diet. Um, so um, we're gonna be starting that next week. We, at the moment, we just have four seniors signed up that are interested in receiving the heart healthy meals. Essentially, they're giving them you know, about three meals a week that are, you know, considered heart healthy. Um, so, you know, we'll, we'll see how many people we continue to um, have interest and in. uh, the truck will, this is Acton, Carlisle and Concord, and the truck will go from each place and we have a set time. Um, basically the meals will be distributed right out of the back of their refrigerated truck. So that's a new program we're, we're getting going. In case any of you don't know, we already do have um, food from Open Table delivered here once a month for people uh, for whom it's difficult for them to get to the Maynard site. Um, so we're already doing that. Um, and Open Table does offer direct delivery to the home for people who can't get to them and they can't get to us. So um, there, there's been a lot of efforts in the in the past year to be sure that that no one with any food insecurity doesn't have access to to food. So did you say this was a daily uh, delivery? No, 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 no. Weekly? Uh, no. The um, the heart healthy um, helpings is going to be um, twice a month. Oh, okay. All right, so I um, also wanted to mention that um, I we've had Dr. Robin uh, Schoenthaler speak here before, um, and I had heard that she had put on an excellent presentation actually at the um, Healing Garden out in Harvard. And so I had our new nurse uh, get in contact with her about doing the same thing again. She's pretty much retired as a, as a radiologist, oncologist at Emerson but has gotten extremely interested in COVID in this last year. And it does a tremendous amount of research and, and is now, I think, beginning to speak on more of a national circuit. Um, but uh, we did secure her. She's going to do a presentation on April 8th um, and from one to two, um, that's a Thursday. And uh, she did ask that we um, collaborate with some other COAs, I think she's, probably getting popular enough. She'd like to get as many people into the audience as possible. So we we are going to be inviting um, Acton, Bedford, and Carlisle to uh, put this out to their seniors as well. And um, uh, they will take registrations and we will send the link to them to send to them. That's one way you can avoid some Zoom bombers is do not make your link public you know as carol ann pointed out we have no choice when it comes to public meetings like this the the link does have to be public but we never post a link in our newsletter um, people sign up and only the people who sign up get the link and that helps reduce um you know uh those kind of uh, uncomfortable scenarios um 
so um, be watching for that. Um, I encourage you to, to join in if you're interested. Yep. Ginger, is the topic COVID that she's going yes. to speak on? Yes. Okay. And you. she literally does um, research right up to the last minute. Um, she, she doesn't sugarcoat things, but she, um, I understand that the message comes across as quite hopeful. There is a historic component to it of how uh, we've gotten through other plagues and pandemics in our history and as well as currently what's going on with COVID. So um, I think it will be well worth people's time to, to listen in. Um, uh, we did get permission from her to record it. Um, and so, you know, it'll be offered through MMN on the YouTube, but like Carol says, very few people know you can do that. But so if you miss it, there you you can find it. Um, we probably won't leave it up a whole long time because it's not, uh, and when you're talking about someone who's giving a lot of current statistics and current information on a topic that changes rapidly, you don't want that sitting out there for three months, six months, a year, you know, we might leave it up for a month and, you know, that might be it because the information may become dated and we wouldn't want someone to be listening to it if something has become inaccurate in the meantime. So I just mentioned that because that's a pretty special presentation we've been able to secure. So um, let's see. Um, I'm going to move into the vaccine report. So some of this you've already heard from Patty's report. Um, so we've had two clinics uh, with the Board of Health. Um, one was for 100, and as you know, that was the one where we allowed people to call in and we crashed the phone system. Then we had another clinic where we actually did 100 and, well, we did 20 homebound, and then we did another clinic for 140, but we did not allow people to call in. That's when the COA started making hundreds of phone calls. And we started with the oldest, we started with the 90 plus, and then we backed it all down, um, assuming that the oldest and the frailest would be the ones that would have the most challenges getting to the mega sites or making an appointment online um, or having the endurance to to be gone out of their home that long or stand in line, et cetera. So um, we were able to do another 140 in person. Um, we have had our second dose clinic for those very first 100 people that got uh, their vaccinations with us. They're completely, they're completely done. Um, this next week, those 20 homebound people will be receiving their second dose. We'll have those completed. And on the 30th of March, we will be doing second dose clinic for that group of 140 people. Um, and uh, we thought we were going to be done. And uh, as was alluded to earlier in the meeting, um, the West Concord Pharmacy did have uh, vaccine left over after they did the Concord Housing Authority. I'm not exactly sure how this works. I think sometimes um, the state ships it in like a hundred, hundred doses. So for instance, the housing authority might have ordered 55, but I don't think you order 55. I think they probably got a hundred. That's my guess. I'm not certain. But anyways, they did call up me and offer to do a clinic for us. They had 50 doses to offer us. And so in, um, that was a pretty heavy lift. We did not have much notice, but we continued calling. Again, feeling it was the fairest. We just like, you know, uh, went down to basically everyone in our database over age 75 has now been called. Um, many of the people had already been vaccinated, which was really good news. They had found ways to, to get that done. And those that hadn't or those that had been struggling were, you know, um, you know, gushing with gratefulness that we were calling them and offering them the opportunity to get that vaccine right here. Um, so, um, so we did another clinic on Monday. Um, as I mentioned, we got 54 instead of 50, and we'll be doing another clinic, you know, 28 days from then to get their second doses in. At this time, I do not expect any more first dose clinics, uh, you know, to, to come up. Um, you know, and if, if the opportunity presents itself, we'll continue to be a cooperating partner. And, and I think we will be continuing to do it the way we've done it, which is that 
you know, we'll call the 74 year olds and we'll call the 73 year olds, um, you know, and because it's the only way to, to be fair. Um, now we did make one exception, which is that if one, if a couple, one person was 75 and the other person was 74, we did let them come as a couple. We didn't say that, you know, only the husband or only the wife could have it. Um, we did, we did allow that. Um, so, um, I think it's going well. It has been a tremendous amount of work. Uh, hundreds of hours of staff time have gone into, you know, to calling people, but it feels good. I think we did it in a fair way, um, you know, and, um, and I'm grateful that we got that many. So all together between the Board of Health and what the West Concord Pharmacy did for us, I'd say we, do around, we did around 300, um, but good. it was, you know, um, 300 of some of the the most challenged folks. So to Kristen's point, now, now that we are not expecting any other clinics to be coming up, we'll be working on helping people who uh, don't have a way to get there and using our volunteer drivers to do that and or helping them, you know, to, you know, secure an appointment if we can closer to them that's ma more manageable for them, you know. Um, Speaking about the potential regional clinic, um, you've heard some bits and pieces about that. Um, the state has indicated that towns could could come together and present a proposal for a regional clinic, and but it does have to be 750 doses. You have to guarantee 750 doses a day, five days a week, I believe. Um, so um, that that's a that would take the effort of a lot of towns to pull that off. So. Um, when they open it to everybody, that should be easy to do yeah. to get that many people. Right, uh, but the staffing you, to do the staffing to do, do it okay. to do 750 50. vaccines okay. a day. Yeah. Um, yeah. That staffing has to come from those towns that are, you know, cooperating together. Um, so, you know, that 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 won't that would not be easy. Um, you know there. There is two sites under consideration. I don't know if that's public information, but, um, um, or it's gonna be a combination of, there's two sites and some of the days will be in this town and some of the days will be in that town. So, um, and as Susan said, that proposal was just sent in this week. So um, we, uh, there's no, nobody knows yet whether the, the state would agree uh, to do that. And if they did, how quickly, um, that would set up and start. I suspect that by the time that got going, it most of the people I serve, 60 and over, most of them are going to be vaccinated by the time that get, get that gets going. And so, I don't expect that the COA would have a lot to do with that um, at that time. That wouldn't probably be the population that we serve by the time that site opened up. You know, so. Um, most of you know, because uh, it's very public, that on Monday the um, essential worker group is being allowed to sign up. And then um, on April 5th, 5th um, adults age 60 and older, and then, and, also, and also people with one comorbidity. Mm -hmm. And then April 19th, every, everybody, no stipulation, anyone who wants a shot would would be would be eligible. That's the um, proposed rollout at the moment. Um, as someone said, um, you know, the pharmacies um, were expecting, the local pharmacies were expecting to be able to get vaccine. So we're local doctors and local hospitals. And um, for the most part, that hasn't happened except in those, um, I think I mentioned last month, they, they've identified certain communities that are at higher risk and there's some exceptions in those communities about more local options in those communities, but Concord isn't one of those. Um, CVS has their own supply. They are not getting their supply from the state. They have a contract with the federal government, so their supply comes to them directly. So many people have had a bit more luck um, going to the CVS site directly because their supply is not linked to the state supply. So. Um, if you're trying to give people advice, you know, um, you know that might be one. You know, don't just concentrate on the mass vax site, which they should look at, but also be looking at CVS separately. Um, 
So I've heard a couple different things. Someone told me earlier they had luck at, you know, 1201. Someone else said CVS puts it up between 5 and 6 a.m. Who knows? Um, but so um, I don't, and let, do, I don't, I think I've covered most of the vaccine. Any other vaccine related questions? Uh, just a follow up question, Ginger. Um, yep. How many staff were involved in this unbelievable effort that you just described? Well, I really have to say everyone, because even though there was, I think, six of us making those calls, if you will, the rest of the staff had to do our jobs for us while we spent all day for a week doing that. So everybody did did extra work. The people who don't normally answer the phone had to answer the phone. People who didn't normally have to do something else had to do it. So everybody did something different, you know, uh, during this time to, to make that work. So um, really, I, I don't know that I could call out just a certain number of people, you know, it really has been, I'm almost emotional about it. It's been hard, but I'm proud of everybody. I really am. Well, yeah. this is absolutely awesome. This is <laughs> yeah. fantastic. Uh, yeah. Really. I think yeah. you should give her a yeah. fantastic. Yeah. So we just wish, uh, you know, to Patty's point earlier, we just wish we could have done more. Everybody was prepared to do more. Every community yeah. was prepared to do more. Mm. So, but we're happy we got the 300 or so that we did. And and those people are very happy. Happy, you know? yeah. yeah. So, They're very lucky. Yeah. And so many people have been so, um, a few of the clinics I've been the observer during the 15 minute uh, a period where you're required to, to wait. And oh my gosh, people are just so incredibly grateful, you know, really. Mm -hmm. um, makes all that hard work <laughs> very worth it, worth it. some yeah. people are taking time and writing thank you notes and just you know so uh, very um you know it, it helps when hard work is rewarded <laughs> so let's move on here um let's see um oh so these two things go together i'm actually going to be um taking some time off, um, you know, which um, is sort of exciting. I think some of you know, you know, we all earn a certain amount of vacation every month and I, I just lose it every month because I can't take it. Um, so I'm actually going to take some time in April. And um, so I'm actually not going to be here at the scheduled April uh, board meeting. And I think we could do two things. I, I could suggest that Lauren join you. She's the assistant director. And, you know, maybe you would all enjoy the opportunity to get to know her better. And she would have the opportunity to interact with you. And you could hear a little bit about COA news from her perspective. Um, or if you prefer not to do that, then we probably need to change the date. So either one is fine with me. I think it's a great idea to have Lauren do it. I, I haven't met her yet. Yeah. It's great career development for her. It's great. Yeah. <laughs> the only thing I have to double check, I hope yeah, she, I think I reported in the past that um, Lauren is now, you know, taking minutes for the Disability Commission. Um, and I'm pretty sure they meet at five o'clock on Thursday. So I have to be sure it's not that Thursday because then that would be, um, a, you know, she wouldn't, she wouldn't finish this in time to get to the other meeting. So, um, I will double check that. And as long as, uh, if you don't hear otherwise from me, assume that uh, she will put it on her calendar and I will have her be the one to start the meeting and do the recording for you. Okay. Okay. I, that's it for me. Oh, that wasn't so bad. <laughs> mm -hmm. Very good. Anybody have anything else? Um, I just wanted we to do have an election coming up for the town. Um, I just want to election. Oh, yes. Town election. Don't forget to go to the polls <laughs> or mail in your ballot. Friday is the deadline to get a mail in ballot. So if you want, if you haven't done that and want to do it tomorrow is the deadline. But I also want to say thinking, oh, that sounds close to Patriots Day when we're meeting next time that um, Lexington and Concord are collaborating on a virtual uh, 
events for Patriots Day, and it'll be they'll be broadcast on Minuteman Network. There will be um, a scaled down Dawn salute, but uh, that was reported at the chair's meeting. Uh, but I don't have any details. But I'm sure if you, as the day goes, uh, as the time comes closer, it'll probably be in the journal and um, online as well in the town website. So that's it. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Carol Ann, okay, just, if that's it. Carol Ann, just two. I'll be I'll be very brief. Uh, Carol, uh, <laughs> would you like would you like me to ask Alan Cathcart to make a recording that you can then suggest to the PEG committee that they post on the video? So the of the water talk. Um, oh. Yeah. Okay. That would and, work, yeah. Okay, and Carol Ann, I have a suggestion to uh, allow us all uh, an incentive to meet in person. We need to do a cheese tasting. Uh <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> all righty. Maybe, uh, hmm. maybe the June meeting. Maybe by then we'll be all okay to meet. Just so you all know, I was I was given a Christmas present by my children on cocktail preparation by Zoom. Oh, all <laughs> evening. <laughs> did they give you all of the ingredients for all of the cocktails so you can do them? They did. It, <laughs> it got shipped to each house the cocktail ingredients and the cheese that you were to eat with each cocktail. Nice. <laughs> After the second or third, it became a real challenge to keep up with the teacher. <laughs> oh. oh this is good we can still laugh that's good okay. okay so we need to take a roll call to um adjourn the meeting do i have a motion i make a motion to adjourn okay second second okay uh let's see patty adjourn Yes. Okay. Uh, Terry. Adjourn. Yes. Kristen. Yep. Michael. Yes. All right. Meeting adjourned. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. See you All next right. month. Thanks, everyone. Bye, everyone. Bye.